Imagine yourself in Tanzania over three and a half million years ago. A strange creature walks past you on two legs, leaving human-like footprints in the wet volcanic ash. This discovery at Le Toli revolutionized our understanding of human evolution, challenging the idea that big brains came before bipedalism. This is the story of the evolution of walking, a journey that spans millions of years and countless generations. Our journey begins with the Australopithecus genus, a group of hominins that lived between four and two million years ago. The most famous of these early ancestors is Australopithecus afarensis, represented by the well-known fossil named Lucy. Lucy, discovered in Ethiopia in 1974, was a remarkable find. Standing just over three feet tall, she had a mix of ape-like and human-like features. Her long arms and curved fingers suggested she was still adapted for climbing trees, but her pelvis and leg bones indicated she walked upright. Lucy's bipedalism was a significant adaptation, allowing her to move more efficiently on the ground. We may never know for sure who first walked upright, but one thing's for sure, together we can keep uncovering the secrets of the past. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell us in the comments below, what do you think drove our ancestors to walk on two legs? Other species in the Australopithecus genus, such as Australopithecus anamensis, also show evidence of bipedalism. These hominins lived in diverse environments across Africa, from woodlands to savannas. Their ability to walk on two legs gave them an advantage in foraging for food, evading predators, and exploring new territories. Before Australopithecus, there were earlier transitional species that provided clues to the origins of bipedalism. Artipithecus, Sahelanthropus, and Auroran are among these ancient ancestors. Artipithecus ramidus, for example, lived around 4.4 million years ago in what is now Ethiopia. Ardi, as she is affectionately known, had a mix of traits. Her feet had a grasping big toe, suggesting she spent much of her time in trees, but her pelvis and leg structure indicated she could walk upright. This feature blend highlights bipedalism's complex evolution, which likely evolved in a patchwork fashion rather than a single straightforward transition. The fossils of these early hominins are scattered across Africa, each adding new pieces to the puzzle of human evolution. As we move forward in time, we encounter the earliest members of the Homo genus. Homo habilis, often called handyman, lived around 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago and showed more advanced tool use and brain development. Walking on two legs required a range of anatomical adaptations. Let's look at the features that make bipedalism possible, starting from the top. The position of the foramen magnum, the hole in the base of the skull where the spinal cord passes through is crucial. It's located centrally in bipedal humans, allowing the head to balance directly over the spine. In quadrupedal apes, it's positioned towards the back, reflecting their forward-leaning posture. The human spine has a distinctive S shape, which acts as a shock absorber and helps balance our upright posture. In contrast, apes have a more straightened spine, suitable for knuckle walking and climbing. Our pelvis is another key adaptation. It's shorter and broader than that of our ape relatives, providing a stable base for our internal organs and supporting the upper body's weight. This shape also allows for the attachment of powerful muscles used in bipedal walking. The femur, or thigh bone, angles inward from the hip to the knee, bringing our knees directly under our center of gravity. This alignment is essential for efficient bipedal locomotion. Additionally, our knee joints lock in a way that supports our weight with minimal effort when we stand upright. Finally, our feet are uniquely adapted for bipedalism. The human foot has a pronounced arch acting as a spring, absorbing shock and propelling each step. Our toes are shorter and aligned, unlike the grasping toes of apes. 
The big toe, or hallux, is particularly robust and aligned with the other toes, aiding in balance and forward movement. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for early bipedalism is the Laetoli footprints, discovered in Tanzania in 1978. These footprints preserved in volcanic ash are estimated to be around 3.6 million years old and show clear evidence of bipedal walking. The Laetoli footprints are remarkably human-like, with a pronounced arch and forward-pointing toes. These prints were likely made by Australopithecus afarensis, further supporting the idea that bipedalism evolved well before the emergence of our genus Homo. Other fossil discoveries, such as those from Dmanisi in Georgia and Lake Turkana in Kenya, provide additional evidence of early bipedalism and its evolution over time. These fossils show a gradual refinement of bipedal adaptations, leading to more efficient walking and running capabilities. Why did our ancestors start walking on two legs? There are several theories that attempt to explain this crucial step in human evolution. Each theory provides different insights into the environmental and behavioral pressures that have driven the evolution of bipedalism. The Savannah Hypothesis suggests that climate change led to the expansion of grasslands and the reduction of forested areas. As our ancestors adapted to these open environments, bipedalism provided a more efficient way to travel long distances, spot predators, and carry food and tools. Walking on two legs would have allowed early hominins to move between scattered resources more effectively and to see over tall grasses, providing a survival advantage in the new habitats. Another theory posits that bipedalism evolved from an adaptation for foraging and feeding. By standing upright, early hominins could reach for fruits and other foods in trees and bushes. This upright posture also allowed them to use their hands for carrying food and young, as well as for making and using tools. Bipedalism likely evolved in response to a combination of factors, including environmental changes, dietary needs, and social behaviors. The ability to walk on two legs provided our ancestors with a versatile and effective mode of locomotion, allowing them to thrive in a variety of habitats. Reflecting on the journey from tree-dwelling ancestors to upright walkers, we see a mosaic of adaptations and behaviors that shaped our species. Each fossil discovery adds a new piece to the puzzle, enhancing our understanding of how walking on two legs became a hallmark of human evolution. Today, walking is such a fundamental part of our lives that we often take it for granted. Yet, it is the result of millions of years of evolution, a testament to the adaptability and resilience of our ancestors. From the early days of Australopithecus afarensis to the advanced locomotion of Homo erectus and beyond, each step in our evolutionary journey has brought us closer to the modern humans we are today. Today, the biomechanics of walking reveal a marvel of human physiology, muscles, tendons and bones orchestrate a delicate balance, ensuring each step propels us forward with efficiency and grace. Beyond its physicality, walking offers a myriad of health benefits, from cardiovascular fitness to mental well-being, making it a cornerstone of holistic wellness. Culturally, walking weaves into the fabric of societies worldwide, from pilgrimage routes tracing ancient footsteps to urban strolls amid towering skyscrapers. It serves as a conduit for social interaction and exploration. Technological advancements, such as ergonomic footwear and mobility aids, have transformed how we walk, enhancing comfort and accessibility in diverse environments. Yet, the origins of walking trace back millions of years to our earliest ancestors navigating ancient landscapes on two legs. The evolutionary journey from quadrupedalism to bipedalism reflects a profound adaptation in hominid species. Anatomical changes, repositioned forum and magnum, modified pelvis and arched feet, equipped early hominins like Australopithecus with the biomechanical prowess to walk upright. The discovery of 3.6 million year old footprints at Laotoli, Tanzania, provides tangible evidence of Australopithecus afarensis bipedal gait, illuminating their stride across prehistoric terrains. 
Environmental factors like climate shifts and habitat changes likely spurred the transition to bipedalism. The savanna hypothesis prosits that open grasslands compelled early hominins to stand tall, scanning horizons for predators and opportunities. This shift not only shaped physical attributes, but also influenced social dynamics, enabling early hominins to carry tools, infants, and, eventually, cultural innovations. Comparatively, human bipedalism differs starkly from the quadrupedal locomotion seen in our primate relatives. Our distinctive gait with a pronounced heel strike, arched foot, and non-divergent big toe underlines the evolutionary journey towards efficiency and endurance. These adaptations defined our physical form and liberated our hands for tool use, fostering technological advancements and societal complexities. As we continue to study and learn from fossil records, we gain a deeper appreciation for the intricate process of evolution. Each discovery tells us more about our past and helps us understand the unique traits that define our species. The story of bipedalism is a remarkable chapter in the broader narrative of human evolution, highlighting the ingenuity and perseverance of our ancestors. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content.